Okay, here you going guys. Welcome back to another gym vlog down here at the Silverbacks gym in Bendigo. The stomping grounds. So we're doing leg day today again guys. Good old leg day. Every three, four days is leg day as you know. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna start. My legs actually feel all right. So as uh, a lot of you know, I've been having some issues with my left knee. Uh, a bit of tendonitis, I believe. Um, you know, I'm not smart enough, or should I say I'm a bit too lazy and I do dodge the odd uh, check in regards to seeing if there actually is some sort of structural damage. I doubt it, honestly, I really do. I think it's just inflammation, uh, which is essentially what tendonitis is. So uh, just trying to figure out what's the cause. Most likely a tight muscle or something of the such that's causing, uh, I guess, poor function of either a stabilizer muscle or an active muscle in the knee joint. Uh, I actually have suspicions it's coming from the hamstring, but at the end of the day, uh, what I thought I'd start this session with is using a barbell. What I'm gonna do with that barbell is a bit different. I'm gonna roll out my legs with it. So um, I'll be starting with the quads, which actually feels like absolute shit, but uh, if it helps, it helps. I've used to, I used to do this back in the day. Uh, I used to use foam rollers, but I've also used barbells, and I find that honestly, barbells are way more heavy duty, and I do have uh, fairly tight friggin' knots. Uh, and uh, so basically I found a barbell just really gets the job done. So I'm gonna roll out my quads, try to get out the knots. I can actually visually see them now that I'm starting to lean up. My quad, it's kind of lumpy in a weird, weird way. So that's not normal. That says that there's uh, issues with uh, the fibers and maybe even the fascia of the muscle. So I'm gonna try and iron it out, literally, with iron. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, and then if I can, which I'm hoping I can, I'm going to try and flip on over. It's gonna be super awkward, but I'm gonna get the barbell and try to roll it across my hamstring. So hopefully I can actually iron that out too. I think that's gonna do some magic because I definitely can tell there's some sort of hamstring restriction or poor activation because it doesn't feel the same on my right leg that has no issues. Uh, that isn't biting, I think it's inner. So maybe adductor based or one of the semitendinosis uh, semi or membranosis um, muscles, which are like small little bands that go through the hamstrings, uh, that actually are quite important. So maybe one of them is seizing up. But either way, we'll see how we go. Um, this is the barbell that I'll be using just to roll out the quads there. And essentially how I'll be doing it, guys, grabbing the barbell, it's not pretty, or at least it doesn't feel it. I'm gonna sit there and use the barbell's weight to just gradually roll it across. Oh the individual vastus heads. So I try to stick, uh, you know, one side to the other. I might start on the vastus lateralis, go intermedialis and end up on the VMO. I sometimes even try to get it up a bit high and get the rectus femoris, which is that muscle strip through here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna get stuck into that guys. It's gonna be super boring to watch me do it. It might be fun because I'm gonna be in a lot of pain, but uh, I'm gonna smash this out, do a little pre, a bit of pre-activator stuff, which I might show you guys, and then I'll jump into my actual leg day, which I'm probably gonna start on isolates and then move on to some compounds once I feel like my legs have woken up. Because when I do this, they do release a lot of muscles that would probably prefer to have some natural tension. So I'll be doing some activators to make sure that that's back on balance before I actually go lifting pretty heavy, uh, as it may displace my joints a little bit, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm gonna smash this out. We'll do some pre-activators and we'll get stuck into the session. Okay, so that was one leg. I'm already pouring with sweat because it's, it's strange when you're dealing with um, pain, sometimes your body just goes into this, I don't know, 
Whenever, whenever I um, get my legs worked on and with uh, Kev, my remedial guy, uh, I, I pull with sweat. It's that pain sweat. Similar to fear sweats, I guess. Either way, that actually felt pretty awesome. I actually think I got a lot out of that. I really should have done this ages ago. I had so much fiscal tations happening, which are muscle, twist, uh, muscle twitches, uh, and that felt great. Um, I always find that whenever my muscles go crazy with twitches, it means there's quite a lot of releasing happening. So uh, I'll probably do the other leg <laughs> and uh, try to do the quad, but I just thought I'd film that. I did actually film just before, uh, just before sh filming, I actually started on my uh, VMO, my teardrop, but then I thought, you know what? I should be filming this and I'll just speed it up so you guys can have a bit of a squeeze at what it looks like with me rolling it on my quads. So that gives you an idea. If you're finding that your quads are like just bullshit holding back with all kinds of weird little issues, sometimes a rollout, a heavy duty rollout, so you can do foam roller or you can go heavy duty with a barbell, that can remove a lot of knots and, and uh, get a bit of extra blood flow into areas that were unactive or just just got knots so it was restricted blood flow, all of that kind of stuff. Could be a fix for you guys. Either way, I thought I'd include that. I'm gonna quickly do all my other shit behind the scenes and then uh, we'll move forward. I've done a shitload of stretching. I rolled out uh, my quads quite a fair bit. I tried to roll out my left hamstring to try and get that going. It was very hard because, well shit, it's kind of getting it on my hamstrings a damn hard job. So um, I ultimately uh, just focused on rolling out my uh, quads. Did a whole bunch of stretching and activating and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, hopefully that's helped. I spent way too long doing that. I just want to get it done. I've been here for already like an hour and a half trying to do all of that rollout and stretching, or at least an hour. So without further a friggin' do, let's just get these hamstrings activated first, and then we'll move over to do some uh, quad extensions next. And then hopefully, I'll start light on this and try to get some activation, and I'll go heavy pretty quick, and then hopefully, uh, they'll feel pretty good so I can start doing some pressing. My tendon actually feels pretty, well my knee, tendon feels pretty nice. So fingers crossed that means that I'm gonna be able to press relatively pain free, uh, free because it feels like it's been two weeks since I've done any kind of leg press and that's actually getting to me now um, because when I don't do that, my legs shrivel and I'm looking in the mirror, I'm not happy. So uh, hopefully after these isolates, we can do that. So let's just get these done. So right now I'm just trying to focus on activation because I'm noticing I did some single legged isolated hamstring curls. My right fires up really well, all the way up until the glute tie in, all of it. But my left, it's like it's, 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 I can feel activation near the knee, but nothing in the glute tie in. That's a problem. So I'm gonna just try to focus on correcting that in these sets. Okay, that oh, was so strange. So it took me majority of that set to actually feel it in that tie-in. I was wriggling around, I was moving my hips to try and get the right spot. Right at the end, the last maybe four or five uh, reps, I actually hit that tie-in. So it's very weak, but it was starting to activate. So now I think I've figured out the problem with my leg, guys. I think it's really underactive upper hamstring glute tie-in kind of muscles on my left leg, which is causing an instability all the way down into my knee, which ultimately will affect my quad. Man, the human body is some complex shit. Okay, fingers crossed, if we can focus on this, we can start improving the leg and we can start generating much better contraction and then get my damn legs back on the track that they're meant to be on. Okay, guys. Set number two of this, hopefully, I can uh, get their hamstring activated, so. Prefer this one over the lying down? Yeah, I uh, prefer this one mainly for like growth. That one's better for activation in my opinion. This one growth because it helps with getting um, a better stretch mediated stimulus. You know what I mean by that? 
So with stretch, uh, stretch mediated contractions, uh, which a lot of science lately and research articles are saying are like the gold standard in trying to get hypertrophy out of a muscle. What you want to do is you want to stretch that muscle as far as it can then generate contraction. That phase, that stretched phase, is going to be the best thing you can do. So you know how people do half reps? Yep. They're really skipping out on that. Even if you're doing 80% of the rep but not the last 10, uh, 12, 15 to 20, right. you're going to really skip out. Uh, but the issue with that is obviously you got to balance it. If you go too hard, you're also in a weakened state. So if you have a higher chance of injury. Exactly. So that's the thing is that if you go too far, there's a trade-off. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, you can actually stretch to the point where you actually get far less activity in the muscle too. Yep. So Are it's... talking about the Frank Starling curve? The what? Frank Starling? It might be. I don't know if that necessarily applies to muscle over uh, entire tension, but I know for individual cells, yep. you get increased contraction force as you stretch more up to a point and then it's downhill. Yeah, yeah, that, like that, 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 that's, a, that's the one. Yep. Yeah. So they were talking about it, they basically said there's a lot of exercises you can do where that can occur. In fact, they said that a lot of the time if you're doing two like bicep curls that are like too far back, yeah. you'll actually find that you're gonna end up using other muscles instead of the biceps, um, yeah. the biceps heads, the actual, uh, you know, biceps brachii. So at the end of the day, you're better off actually just curling either from here yeah. or doing maybe a pre-chart. But if you go too high, yeah you actually get the opposite effect. You get the squeeze that actually disables one of the heads. Yeah. So there's actually no real need to do bicep curls that are actually like this or even too far back. Yeah. Work within a range of here and then maybe here. Yeah. That's about it. Um, and obviously maybe change up the grip so you can get a different effect on the yeah. bra uh, brachioradialis and, and brachioradialis. Yeah. So yeah, different things, but I find the stretch made contractions big. This because your hamstring's a bi-articulate muscle. It's going over two joints. Yeah. If you hinge at the hips and extend at the knees, you're actually getting a dual stretch and like this. That's why this, in my opinion, is better for growing yeah. versus if you want to actually stimulate a mind-muscle contraction because yeah. you get a better squeeze on this. And I'm a big believer that squeezing the muscle helps generate a better mind-muscle connection uh, because then when you get it at max squeeze, you get the most, I guess you could say, mental sensory yeah. burn and then you can unwind from there. Yeah. While what about RDLs then? What, RDLs, fantastic. Uh, I think they're honestly, I've been doing RDLs the last three sessions and I thought I'd skip out just because my lower back was feeling a bit weird yeah. in one of the SIJs. I think RDLs are probably the best exercise you can do for your hamstrings. The best. Um, this would be second. Yeah. Maybe a, a kneeling singular, uh, singular leg hamstring curl. Uh, you know those ones that they have. No, actually, Nordics are fantastic too, um, but I find Nordics are probably better. If we're talking about an overall exercise in terms of what it can really bring to the table in regards to uh, like securing a joint, Nordics are better because there's a bigger instability factor that doesn't really get delivered by, say, a machine. So I dare say that Nordics and even dumbbell, uh, dumbbell uh, hamstring curls, which a lot of people struggle to do but when done right you can really get some massive hamstrings they're really fantastic so let's put them over there they're obviously going to fit in that bubble because they've got a different factor altogether, which yeah. is instability but if we're looking at like machines i'd say That's this my too. yeah this one and then the, when i mean the single leg kneeling hamstring curl you know the one where you get your knee up like this and then you lean over yeah. and then you do the curl i think they're probably second potentially tied with this because yeah. again you're leaning over you're creating that yeah. tension it's just a single-legged version, but I feel this locks you in a bit more. I agree. With this. And then, this would be third. I think that this has its place, it's just overrated. Yeah. yeah. I see much, I, mean, I guess that was probably more common, but yeah, I see that much used much more than this, but I agree on Exactly. I think, and that's because, uh, one, easier to get into, yeah. more comfortable. Lots of social influ uh, media influencers use this a lot more than this and i believe that's just become a, a perpetuated uh it's like a monkey see monkey do kind of situation yeah, yeah. and look it works that's why and and the other thing too is the idea of not sitting on the muscle you're working on they think there's some sort of big factor on that which i understand but i don't think it's enough to really warrant that being that much better man i'm sitting on it sure but i'm still generating the contraction and there's still a hell of a lot of pump happening when i get off the damn seat yeah. Maybe what could be recommended is don't sit in it 
after you've done your set. Maybe get up. That's actually probably the best advice That's I can give. Yeah, isn't it? Getting out of and in the dare machine. <laughs> okay, guys, so uh, let's smash this set out. Nice and easy. Let's go a little bit higher. And again, let's focus on that contraction. I really want to lock myself into this this time too, guys. <clears throat> I can do a bit better than that, surely. Without hurting myself, I don't know. <laughs> nah, I can't. I need a second person. Okay, let's try this. I can easily feel this right leg grabbing everywhere, which is fantastic. Okay, not bad. What I'm trying to incorporate into that movement, weirdly enough, is I want to get the stretch. So I'll stick my ass out and I'll really extend the legs up, keep my chest up on the out kind of aspect. But as it's coming in, I actually try to squeeze my glutes and thrust up to try and really squeeze at the bottom of the glutes. So I can then try my best to generate a forced contraction in the upper glute. So we'll see how we go. See ya, bro. <laughs> so. We'll see how we go. Hopefully I can just keep that up and we can start waking up this dormant piece of shit. I want some big legs, damn it. Okay, another set down, let's do another. Okay, let's get this next set done, guys. I'm gonna go up, up a bit more. Actually, no, I just had a fella jump in. So his weight is actually perfect for where I want it to be. So again, we're not going stupid. We're just trying to get enough stimulation in the muscles to wake everything up and hopefully create an adaptation. It is getting tired and fatigued by the end of the set in exactly where I want it to grow or activate or wake up. So that is actually a mega plus. So we can just keep that happening. That should signal adaptation for that to stay on for longer and uh, fire off way better for any other movements that generate that muscle uh, muscles call for help basically. So when I do my quad extension, I want those muscles to turn on to help stabilize the quad. Um, so when I do the, the, the quad extension or leg extension, I want them to turn on nice so it locks everything in and then the quad heads can fire off properly. It's something that's been missing. So let's smash this out guys. Yeah, that was good guys. Awesome, I think one more of those and then we'll move over to the uh, leg extensions. Okay, final set, smash these out, get them done. Okay. So yeah, just one more set of these guys and then we'll move on to another isolate of some sort. Um, let's go a bit heavier now that that glute tie-in upper left hamstring is finally starting to turn on. Okay. Okay. That felt heaps better, guys. That is getting closer to my heavier weight, so I'm very happy to feel that stimulation happening and activation happening in that upper uh, left hamstring. That's definitely been something I haven't been thinking about. And then when I was kind of taking a bit of mental notice of what was going on in my right leg, which is my healthier leg, I could tell there was a dormancy starting to happen in my left upper hamstring. So, and honestly, I do feel like that's been causing a lot of the other options, uh, the other issues. So hopefully if we fix that, we uh, cook them with gas. Okay, let's move on guys. Woo. Moment of truth guys, let's see how my uh, quad goes now that I've uh, warmed up that upper left glute tie-in. So let's see if my theory was correct that 
If I got that bad boy firing, I would be able to get better activation out of these Vastus heads, the VMO and the Lateralis. And fingers crossed, I can start growing my legs properly. Hey guys, that felt pretty good. Well, I think that's it. And plus when I was doing that, I could definitely feel my glute tines grabbing a lot better. It did feel a lot more secure. And it even visually looks like my quad heads are firing off a bit better when I do that. So I think we're onto something guys. Let's up it, go a bit heavier. Okay, so hopefully it doesn't, what do you call? Out of focus, in focus, out of focus, in focus like it did last time. Camera, this is my face. This is the exact angle and position it did that, I think. So if it does that again, I have a mate of mine who told me uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a hint about how I can use manual focus in certain situations to stop that kind of bullshit using focus assist. So I might have to give that a crack if that does that again. Okay, let's lock on in. Let's go a bit heavier. Let's go 140 and we'll go up by 40 kilos at a time. If it feels good. Okay, let's do it. Really get that glute tie and squeeze and on. Uh. Okay, that felt awesome, guys. No knee pain at all whatsoever. I think we're under something 100%. That was good, dude. Just gotta try and make sure I keep a good activation in my fastest lateralis. I was trying to drop out, but a bit of my muscle connection and rejigging around, I kept it going. Okay, another set. So I think this is set three. We're starting to get heavy territory now, which is great, because it's been a while since I've been able to go heavy on this pain free. And when I'm talking heavy, Ah, look, it's, 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 it's the start of the heavies, 180 uh, pounds on this machine, which is about three quarters of the stack. Yeah, something like that. So, locked in, locked and loaded. Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the juice. Oh, it's trying to escape me. There we go, found it. Okay, not bad. Honestly, feeling it a smidge, real smidge, but that is because with this weight, it's starting to make it hard for me to focus on that glute tie-in, that hamstring, upper hamstring glute tie-in, which is obviously gonna be what's causing this to seize up. So what I might do, similar to yesterday with the tricep extensions with arms, I'm gonna drop back down, but only to 160. So one plate rather than two. And we're gonna try that again and make sure we keep that even glute supportive contraction to anchor everything so we get good firing. So one more set of this, guys. So again, I dropped it down to, actually I haven't yet, I'm dropping it down to 160. Really wanna focus on keeping that symmetrical contraction. I think I also mentioned it earlier in the video, I did, figure out that I have way too much tension. So what I'd say, it's actually a shortened, tight muscle in my uh, left quad, which is gonna be causing issues with that hamstring activation, a few other things. So I think I'm gonna have to start implementing some stretching. Uh, and that should very much help that. It's probably also got a trigger point in there that needs to be released as well. Okay. Oh. Oh. 
go, that was a good set guys. Pretty happy with that. We're done on the quad extensions. Whew, let's leave it at that. I don't even know what time it is guys. I think I've been here for like two and a half, three hours. Too much pre-activative, stretchive, diagnostic shit. This session's definitely gotten away from me. I don't know. I'll have a bit of a think. Okay guys. So we've moved over to the pendulum squat. I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit, man, I gotta put a little sticky note on my bloody camera. Flip the damn screen. So yeah, I've gotta sit there and figure out, oh, you're all the way down there, Jesus. I've gotta figure out what I wanted to do and uh, I nearly just actually headed home because I've been here for so long uh, and I, I had things to do, but you know what, screw it. I've gotta do this, guys. I gotta put more effort into my leg days. That's half the reason I'm doing this. So uh, I'm gonna be doing some pendulum squats, just three solid sets. 15 to 12 if it gets a bit too heavy and just really go for it. My legs are feeling pretty good still, I think. So let's just smash them out, guys, and get the fuck out of here. Okay, that didn't feel too bad. Uh, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna add another plate, and uh, that's gonna be a grind to get to 15, I reckon. I've been putting off doing pendulum squats for a while. I started doing them, I started getting up to three plates, essentially, for about 15. It was gassing me, if anything. It felt like absolute freaking cardio, so I was dodging it for that reason, but uh, stop being a little bitch, Matt. That's what it's all about, okay. So, let's up it, go again. It's feeling all right, so far. Okay, set number two, two plates, let's go. Had to readjust the feet there, guys. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, that was harder than expected, guys. Oh. Okay, I think just one more set of that and we're done. Oh, it's been so long since I did that. I now know why I don't regularly do them. Jesus, they work. Oh, let's get it done. That last set absolutely rooted me, so I don't want to do this, but nothing to it but to do it, guys. Final set, and then I could bugger off, so home stretch. Let's go. That's done, guys. Oh, okay. I'm happy I did that. I could have easily just walked, uh, went home, not walked, but after the isolates. But instead, I decided to just suck it up and get it done. Okay, I'm happy with that, guys. Okay, I'm gonna catch my breath, go home, chill the fuck out, edit this video. You guys have a good one. Thanks for. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay strong, shredded, swole, whatever your goal is. The best of all, stay tuned. Okay. Oh. Squeeze the juice! <laughs>